Thank you and good afternoon, everyone. So, I, in this, uh, let's talk about block, uh, asset backed tokens and digital markets. But I want to start with the blockchain and the technology behind it. And if we look back in the early 90s, how our media looked like, we are all just passive participants and recipients of the data. So there were newspapers and radio and TV, and they were provided the information while we are, were just passively getting it. And then this new web and new media came, and what happened is that we now exchange information in very sort of one-to-one -one and many-to-many -many fashion, very fast, and it looks like it's very symmetric. But it was a great promise, but it's still the information, uh, there is a small amount of companies that get value from it, keep our data, and they are much more stronger and powerful than we are in exchanging the information. I think this is what, what was leading this excitement behind this Bitcoin uh, protocol that was presented by Satoshi Nakamoto with Bitcoin about 10 years ago. So whether we can really build decentralized system where everyone is equal, all participants are equal, and we can transfer the value in, uh, without this, the third parties, the parties between uh, the uh, like governments that authenticate us, on some organizations that help us to transfer value, whether we can present this really decentralized system and what it can do for all of us. So what, what is this amazing thing behind blockchain? And what blockchain tries to solve for, ev for uh, everyone? And it's all about trust. So if you think about how our, our life look like, or how economical life look like, we always trust someone. We trust our government, we trust our bank, we trust the, our credit company. But it's, and we always, you know, trust is expensive and trust takes time. So what blockchain is all about is presenting this new sort of ground and operating system of trust that is actually built on some technology and a protocol. And for us, people behind this technology, understanding what it can make to our lives is really exciting. So how the world will look like if we really succeed to bring this technology to, to real life? So, and this Bitcoin was more about money and cryptocurrency and how you can present money without this big organization like banks. But when we look back to this protocol and the decentralization part of it, we also see that it can bring a lot of value for businesses. So instead of businesses to be silos, like everyone has its digital system and it runs its business, and then there are other businesses that connect them together, what if we can be this network of business, this new ecosystem, and then the new assets will flow over in this business network. We will log this in one transaction, the transaction, uh, one ledger, and it will be immutable ledger, and that's why we will guarantee everyone will see what's going on. And this we will provide this new uh, platform for businesses to build a new value. What is special for blockchain for businesses and why it's different from this Bitcoin? So in difference from Bitcoin, the idea is that uh, we know who are we dealing with. Participants have their own identity. The other part is you share information in need to know basis. So I don't want to share everything about my business. I only share things that I uh, want to share in this blockchain network. Uh, I have some provable endorsement to this asset. So it's not just uh, something you need to trust me. I can prove that I have this asset, I have this thing, and, and that starts to move in the network. And I decide what to put on the network. So the participants, when we build them to, uh, in the blockchain network, decide what they want to share. So let's look on some, and you know, this technology is with us for about, uh, you know, Bitcoin for 10 years, but blockchain for business is about five or so years. And I think now we understand more both the value of it and the hype that was behind, but we also have already running networks that we can see what they can do and what value they can bring us. 
So one of these networks that is built on the technology we actually built as IBM blockchain platform is Tradelands. So Tradelands is a business blockchain network that we built together with Myers and where we track the container, uh, the supply chain of uh, logistics and containers uh, in the world. And if you look how container business and supply chain business look like today, before the Tradelands, it didn't change too much in the 700 years before the days of Marco Polo. It was very paperwork business. And for, if you lose one document, you can get stuck for your container for a month in some place. And there was about 30 people or 30 companies or authorities involved in transition of every shipment. And what actually, and why this happened, for example, for Trailands and not for something else? I think this was the industry that was less digitalized before. And then instead of building some third party, which actually will solve the, solve the, pro the problem, what we can do and what we have done with the Tradelands is put all the participants on this blockchain network and create a new transactional system which uh, provides you information about where your container is. It's fully open and traceable by others. And you don't need to trust any one of the providers. You just trust the network and the algorithm. There is a consortium of companies that create it. So now you can easily know in a secure way where your containers are, and the participants in this network coming from different industries. It's both the uh, Maersk, which is a shipment company, but it's also port authorities and governments. There are suppliers and the consumers. So everyone who is in this logistics network become, get value from this uh, blockchain network. So if you think about it, how the transactional business looked like before, and every company created its own transaction in its own world, now with the blockchain, you have more sort of a network of uh, create, and you can bring and easily build transactions in a cross company uh, systems. And you take out the trust component. You provide this trust by the network. Another great example that I'm always excited to think about is the food trust. So the, we are living in the global world. In this global world, you can actually, you eat the food, you don't know where it came from, how long was the journey of this food, in which conditions it was transferred, who was behind this food, how hard these people work to get this food produced and so on and so forth. So and the, pro, the, the food trust network actually comes to answer you to the whole, this simple question when you take tomato in the supermarket and you can tell where it comes from and how it came to the supermarket. And I think this is a great example of what this blockchain network can make to the world. Uh, so I think when we look at the next level, and more also trying to bring not only you know, connecting the businesses together, blockchain can really create a new market of the future. So you have this new network and a new trust model where you don't trust one single participant or one single organization. You create your own networks of trust. And this can create a, a now you have this, you know, you have identity which is provided in the digitalized way, not centralized. You have digitalization, and it can bring a lot of new markets, uh, and I will just show how. And uh, one of the main, for example, uh, examples that is relevant to financial space is a cross-border payment. So cross-border payments, you have transferred payments globally, it's, uh, there is different governments and different regulations. It usually takes time and it usually takes uh, money, uh, a lot of costs. So we can build in it in one and put in this organization that do cross-border payments. In blockchain networks, we actually can make uh, those payments much more simple and uh, trustable using blockchain. So let's see what happens to tokens. And you know, it all started with cryptocurrency and we as IBM, uh, you know, we are not in the cryptocurrency business and I personally, you know, think that it's exciting, but 
it's not too much behind uh, you know this crypto so it will take uh, we'll see how it evolves but token is really something else token tokenization is a process where you take something real some real asset and you represent it or the right to have it it's not it's, it's not something physical on the digital way and after you did it you actually can now work with this asset and get value from it uh, from this blockchain network. So one example about what tokens can make for us. There are two billion people in the world which are unbanked. They don't have any access to bank or they don't use bank. If we expose them via token economy to tokens, which is in some sense similar to bank, we can open them all to global trade, to global financial system and to you know, extend this global finance market for more 2 billion users. So this is only one of promises what, what tokens can make for us. So what are those asset-backed tokens and why, you know, we are excited to this? So as I mentioned, this is the tokens that are backed by real assets. So you would say, so what? I think, you know, if you compare it to the crypto, there is something real that is behind it. And you always can exchange it with this something real. So your trust and your certain confidence on this is much, much higher. But what we can make with these assets-based tokens is bring those assets to the new digitalized uh, world and create new markets and actually increase the liquidity of, of those. So you can easily trade things and create new, new markets from things you could not trade before. Let's take some examples of, you know, what, see, what we see in this asset uh, back tokens. I think real estate is one exciting thing. So today real estate market is very non-liquid. You actually, it takes you a lot of time. You're, uh, you need to sell the big house, you know, the full houses. It's mostly manual and it's very regulated. Let's think if you can represent on blockchain less than one square meter of your house and easily sell it. You create a new whole market with a very big liquidity than before. Another thing is about IP things, or things like patents or music. It's not easy to sell them, and usually there are very, very small markets dealing with them. But let's say if you are a music provider, can, sell, can tell, okay, if you are just listening to my music, you can do it for free. But if you want to incorporate my music in, the, in your movie, you need to pay me. So all this you can settle in the blockchain platforms. Another example is commodities. So there are markets selling commodities, gold and oils, but whether this is, uh, how easy it is for us to get them. And there are also the new ways of energy, like hydro energy, solar, or wind, and we actually don't have a good market for selling them. And one of the examples of uh, work we have done in IBM uh, research is the Bullionist platform, which talks about gold-backed tokens. And it makes this platform for digitalizing, go, uh, trading, uh, digitalizing over blockchain the trade of gold. So let's say we sh you start with an issuer, and the issuer issue, you know, takes these gold, big gold bars, and it, provide, it creates gold back tokens, that, and the gold bars are kept in, in custodian, and custodian puts these gold back tokens uh, to sell. Now you have primary market of customers that you know, sell this uh, to someone and create a new market. And let's say you have end customer like Will. And the uh, Will will pay fiat money and get these gold back tokens. Afterwards, he can sell it to someone like for Bob, for example, another customer. Bob will pay you know, also fiat money and keep these gold back tokens with him. But in every moment, Bob can go to this platform and put his gold back tokens and take the real gold back. So this is what is completely different because be, be, between asset back tokens and the crypto world. And we see that this is a much easier way to sell gold. So if you think why Bitcoin is so attractive, I think it's because it's easy transferable, so it has transferability and can be easy divided to smaller pieces. And what this is exactly what we can get with asset-backed tokens, but also get the confidence 
of uh, get the confidence of uh, this is backed by the real system and the real goal behind it. So we talked about networks, and I really think that blockchain is about building networks and building a consortium and taking sort of our digitalization to the next level. But it's not only, uh, you know, those networks are, are, are not uh, distinct. Let's say you build a trade lens network for trade logistics. On the other hand, you build some, as we have one of the networks called WeTrade for trade finance. And the trade finance actually is very connected to the trade logistics because now you can know instantly whether your container, where it is, and why it was delayed. And the model behind trade finance <coughs> becomes different and changes. So you can see that it's not only networks, that more on the level of network of networks. And then if we bring sort of token, we somehow uh, unified our uh, entities on each one of those platforms, the interoperability of platforms, and say how containers are represented in one platform and the trade finance, how we represent the money in the other, are easily connected if you have the token platform. So, when we talk, so now, up to now, we more talked about you know, the business part and why it's so exciting. And one I really believe it's something that will change, will change our life. But we as researchers are dealing with actually building it, building those platforms that will work for those new futures that you know, may be there to come in some years. What are technical challenges behind uh, uh, that, we see, uh, that we see? I think one which is maybe clear and uh, uh, more uh, natural is scalability and performance. So we now sort of digitalize the whole world. We want to asset to move a lot of assets to tokens, and we want to create this open economy. We need a system that we will fork fast, will have a good throughput of um, transactions, and it also will be ready for this huge amount of participants that will come up. The other part is about privacy and compliance. So all blockchain ideas were come on the idea that everything sees everyone, and that's how we all believe this network. But you want to keep privacy. So how you play with all those two? First, keeping privacy. The second, also proving that you have a real thing. And the third part, especially in this world of asset back tokens, is connection to the real world. So let's say I take gold, and I put it, and I digitalize it. And then you will replace this gold with something fake. How does this all work? So I need something real to prove it. So we are, uh, we are the technology are building on Hyperledger Fabric, which is the leading technology for those blockchain network, which is enterprise network for building this, uh, uh, this uh, business networks. And uh, it's part of Hyperledger, which is Linux Foundation open source project, and as all or most of open source of blockchain projects is open source, so everyone can really trust what's going on there. So you are welcome to you know to see Hyperledger Fabric and Hyperledger sessions. What we also do, we present tokens in Hyperledger Fabric. So in order to build this asset back tokens, you need inside the, uh, the platform to have a, a native representation of tokens which will help you to build all this use case for fungible, non-fungible tokens, all this uh, real estate from gold and others. And that's what we are bringing now to the Hyperledger fabric. This will bring, together with this, the native support for privacy and compliance. So let me move to this very important topic of privacy. And let me touch the technology that is exciting, I think, everyone, which is called zero knowledge proofs. And why it's so exciting and why it's so important for, and so relevant for our blockchain world. So, and what, so let's start with what is zero knowledge proof. Zero knowledge proof, actually, what it can make you, you can prove something without showing you. I think the best example I have ever seen is you enter the pub and you want to prove that you are, you know, depending on the country, let's say 18 years of age like in Israel, and, what, and you can do it without showing your identity. Because once you show your ID, you expose this guy to much more information that he, that, that it, he needs. 
the whole idea of zero knowledge proof is to prove that you are 18 years old without even no noticing your age. So you can prove ownership, you can prove uh, membership, you can prove that you have tokens, and so on and so forth. And why it's so important for blockchain? Blockchain, in uh, its part of its network, has its main part that I need to prove that I have this asset. I need to prove that I am I, but I don't want to share my information because let's talk about you know assets that are going on on this network. Uh, you know about uh, my account details, or maybe my buyer uh, experiences, or uh, what I'm, uh, uh, what I have in uh, in my bank account. Bank account. So when bank A c communicates with bank B, it doesn't want to know to know others to know even there is, exist those transactions. But we do we we do want to get it without. So we do want to get privacy without impacting verifiability of the transaction. So I want to verify the transactions. I want to make things transparent and accountable. On the other can keep in privacy. So this is what we are adding to uh, talking uh, in the Hyperledger fabric is a zero knowledge proof library that will uh, show you those things, that both parties that exchange transactions are authorized, so you know who are the authorized to create the transaction, that the sender owns those, these tokens, and that those tokens were not spent before. One of the main parts that we are dealing with in this blockchain business is about double spend. So let's say I have something, but I will send it to one guy and to the other guy. This is the comp exact example of the double spend, and what Zero Knowledge uh, Library will proof is that I didn't spend those tokens before. Another important point is about auditability. Let's say I am bank A and I'm doing all those transactions and I have my auditor. So the auditor needs to know much more information. It, all, it also needs to know the amount of money that was passed and so on. So we add functional capabilities to the blockchain that you can, that the auditor can actually encrypt had keys to encrypt, uh, decrypt the information and get and can perform auditing on the information stored on blockchain. And it brings me to the sec uh, to the next part of uh, about the connection to physical. And I think this is exciting part because when we started to work on blockchain and started to think about examples in IoT world and in real world on asset back tokens and gold and so on, it was it was very exciting. And I think one of them it was always pharmaceutical about tracking drugs. But then you say, OK, so we did build this exciting digital systems. But if someone will replace the real object by the fake one, and I will not know, all my smart digitalization and tracking doesn't bring me any value. So here we come with the notion of crypto anchors. And actually, it tries to, bring, to cryptologically uh, Proof uh, that they uh, have some physical anchor, and we'll see it, a number of technologies, and you can prove that the, uh, this object is exactly the object that was before. So one of these is a small, this is a small chip that can encode some identity. The other one is more about this optical microliquidics part, which is usually used for pharmaceuticals, where you can check very fast and very cheap that this is the same material and this material was not used before. So you create sort of optical representation and what is good that you can uh, compare it very uh, almost instantly to what you have uh, done before. And you encode this crypto information on blockchain and then you can compare the two objects that you have before and after. Another great example about crypto angers is IBM Blockchain Verifier. So you can take your iPhone, attach this optical device, take a picture, and then <coughs> from the wave, uh, doing AI models of the wave wavelengths, we can actually difference, see the difference between the real and the fake. And this works well for wines that are added some water, and for oil, which is replaced by something cheaper and so on and so forth, and also for, uh, for drugs. But if you think this is exactly the missing piece 
in the technology the, for asset backed tokens that can connect us to the real world. So we cannot talk about asset backed tokens without talking more about crypto and Libra. And I think Libra was a very big excitement uh, for all these uh, people working on tokens. And, uh, uh, and they did, uh, in some sense, very good job on bringing together a lot of companies which are behind it, and not only Facebook. But I, still, uh, but I think st still they were pointed to the problems in privacy, maybe no, not problems, but potential problems, and regulations. And maybe this brings me to the point I want to conclude. So if we think about whether this blockchain technology is a real enabler of the new world, yes, it is, I think. But it is not the only one, and it will not happen only by the technology. There is also the financial models that need to be built in order to make this technology really relevant and bring us value. But the other third part, which is not less important, is the part of the regulations. So if you think about the internet, and when the internet started, and maybe this is closes the loop to the beginning of my talk, internet started and there was a lot of regula regulatory regulatory companies that regulate our internet, including W3 and so on. So new, and, and in this world of, uh, you know, industries and money and finance, the regulations is very government oriented and very centralized indeed. And we either have our regulated regular world or we have now irregulated or completely regulated world. So the regulations need to ev evolve together. Only by the, uh, bringing together financial models, regulations, and evolving blockchain technologies to be a ground of this technology, we can see you know, the real power of decentralization coming uh, and bringing us value. So I invite you to our IBM booth, both here and in uh, the main hall, and thank you.